All right, and we are back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. And for the second part of the show, we're going to talk about the Jets some more. A couple things regarding their new acquisitions this offseason. Um, first, we'll talk about Hassan Reddick, and then we'll also talk about Mike Williams as well. So my, uh, Hassan Reddick, they tr- uh, traded for from the Eagles or to replace Bryce Huff, who went to the Eagles, essentially. Uh, so it was kind of a flip-flop there, even though Bryce Huff signed with the Eagles and they traded for you, you get You get what I'm saying. And we'll also talk about Mike Williams, who was the big acquisition on the offensive side of the ball. So this is what... Hassan Reddick had to say about uh, joining the Jets. So uh, he talked about how it's going to be fun. I don't think people are ready for what's going to happen. Uh, I believe I have a lot left in the tank. If I didn't, I wouldn't be here. Uh, That's pretty much that. And Hassan Reddick started in all 34 games that he played with the Eagles, which is big, which is big um, to hear that. I feel like when I don't have any more left to give, I'll retire. Until that point, I'm going to continue to try to play my best ball. As far as the Eagles go, though, it wasn't about what's left in the tank or anything like that. It's a business, and sometimes hard decisions have got to be made, even if you don't like them. Um, A guy that has 58 career sacks. So, um, again, this is a good trade for the Jets. Um, Two and a half of Reddick's 11 sacks last season came against the Jets, and the Eagles... Uh, suffered their first loss to the Jets, with, which I still, well, at the time couldn't wrap my head around it, but then the Eagles collapsed, and then you were like, okay, well, now it kind of makes sense. Uh, but at the time, when the Eagles were 10-1, and one, and you kept saying, they're only losses to the Jets. Like, it just doesn't make sense. But, um, and then he talked about the defense of the Jets. He said, we're going to make it all easier for each other. So the attack, the attack, the attack style, I'm all for it. I'm all about constantly putting quarterbacks under duress with the group that we have, the front that we have, we should be able to do that really often. Um, so, yeah, he's um, definitely excited to join this Jets defense, which was the strength of the team. Um, there's no question about it. And if this team has a competent offense that could put up points, that's only going to make the defense better. Because, you know, I mean, you maybe question the Jets' effort late in the season because it's just, well, we got no chance because of what we have going on at quarterback. Now, if you have a healthy Aaron Rodgers and this Jets offense is putting up points and Brees Hall's running the football effectively and Rodgers is getting the ball to Garrett Wilson and Mike Williams, who we're going to talk about as well, um, you know, this, that's going to make the Jets defense better. And it's, not, it's going to take the pressure off of them to, you know, because they had to be perfect. Because the Jets' offense just could not generate points. Now, Brees Hall, like, towards the end of the year, he was unbelievable. But, um, you know, uh, it it just, uh, again, the the Jets, quarterback-wise, you know, it it, it was rough. It was rough. Um, I mean, Brees Hall was doing his part, and Garrett Wilson was doing... You know, the best he could with what he was given, but it just again the the Jets offense so for Jet fans. You're hoping that you're getting better quarterback play in 2024, which again, healthy Aaron Rodgers, you will, you will. Even if it's not the Aaron Rodgers that we're accustomed to seeing over the course of his career, if you get because again he's 40 years old. If you're getting and coming off of an Achilles injury, if you get anything. If you get a, a somewhat decent version of that quarterback, not the MVPs, the back-to-back MVPs, if you're getting something a little less than that, you'll take it. You'll take it. Um, so Robert Sala talked about Mike Williams' uh, recovery, so we'll, now we'll t- uh, transition over to what was talked about with him. So he's got a long way to go in his recovery from the ACL injury. Uh, he was comparing the timeline... Uh, to Brees Hall, who tore his ACL um, the previous season. Uh, not last year, but we knew that. Uh, despite the challenges of the recovery process, Soller ex- expressed confidence that Williams will be ready for week one if he follows the proper rehabilitation protocols. Uh, Sala highlighted Brees Hall's remarkable recovery from a similar injury, noting that Hall had a standout performance in week one of the 2023 season, despite concerns about his recovery timeline. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, literally the first run of the game. <laughs> the highlight of Aaron Rodgers' jet career, well, other than him running out with the flag uh, before the game, uh, was the handoff to Brees Hall, which, I mean, when Brees Hall ran that football for whatever, however many yards it was, I mean, MetLife Stadium was going crazy. And Jet fans were going crazy. Uh, all over the place because it was just like, wow, th this is this feels different. And it just, it ended in an instant a few plays later. Um, Salah did acknowledge, though, however, that the recovery timeline for Mike Williams, who is 29 years old, uh, who's older than Brees Hall, might differ from that of a younger player like Hall. Uh, Williams sustained his ACL injury on September 24, 2023, giving him more time for recovery compared to Brees Hall. Uh, the Jets' management has emphasized the importance of not rushing Williams' recovery, with general manager Do Joe Douglas stating that they don't expect him to be ready for the start of training camp. So he is going to miss some time. Well, I mean, yeah, he's got a long way to go, but he is going to miss some time going into um, next season. But when you're talking about training camp, preseason, things like that, we'll see if he even plays in the preseason. Um, but at least from what they're saying, he will be ready. It seems like he'll be ready for week one. Uh, while the focus is on Williams being ready for week one, any additional preparation time before that would be beneficial, particularly for building chemistry with quarterback Aaron Rodgers. Sal expressed optimism about Williams' potential contributions to the team once he completes his recovery process. So we'll see what happens. Um, again, I, I think this could be a good move for the Jets, but yeah, it could also be bad because... Again, if he gets hurt again, you know, you don't want to see that. But the Jets need another threat besides Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson needs some help there. And more help could be on the way through the draft. Because, again, I talked about how they could potentially go after, um, you know, one of these receivers. It seems, I mean, the, one, the ones that will probably fall to them, it's probably either going to be... Roma Dunze or Brian Thomas Jr. Again, from what I'm seeing, it seems like like Marvin Harrison Jr. is probably going to be the first wide receiver taken off the board. Then it's going to be Malik Neighbors, and then it's going to be one of these two guys. Again, could be wrong. Those those guys end up getting traded, or or team trades up and gets them um, before the Jets can pick. Well, we'll see. I, I don't know. I'm just throwing random things out there, but. That's probably what they would end up with. And I think Roma Dunze actually went in to uh, visit the Jets. So, And I know if he got drafted to the Jets, I know one of my friends who's a Jet fan uh, would be ecstatic about it because that's his guy. Um, and obviously my other Jet fan friends would be excited about it as well, but I just know he's a big Roma Dunze guy. So I know he'll be happy about that. If that, if that ends up happening... Because then they could also go the other way and trade or trade and draft Brock Bowers. And my other friend who's a Jet fan is a big Brock Bowers guy. So I know he would be very happy about that uh, as well. But again, they're all kind of, for the most part, just not very optimistic about this Jet season. Because it's just that's how they're programmed now. Because you saw what happened in week one against the Bills. And they they got in their minds, well, what if that happens again? So they can't even get excited. Like, you're, so, you're improving the offensive line. You know, you get Mike Williams. And again, is Mike Williams like one of the best wide receivers in the NFL? No. But I think it's an upgrade over what they've had. Um, definitely an upgrade over, even with him getting hurt, I think he's an upgrade over the other wide receivers that they have on the team outside of, well, Garrett Wilson. Because Alan Lazard, they paid him all that money, and that did not pan out. Now, I think with Rodgers back in the fold, Lazard is going to be how he was in Green Bay. You're going to see that Alan Lazard. You're not going to see this Alan Lazard that just was a different player. Um, Now, again, maybe I'm a little too positive on Alan Lazard but I I think Alan Lazard as a number three because that's what he is um you know he's like a lower tier number two number three wide receiver 
That's what that's what he is. Um, you know, at least in Green Bay, like when you had Devonte Adams on the opposite side, I mean, it, Lazard was a different player in Green Bay, but that was because you had a healthy Aaron Rodgers. When he gets, we're gonna get hurt with the Jets, and you got Zach Wilson throwing you the ball, and Tim Boyle and Trevor Simeon. Yeah, it's it's gonna impact some people. And uh, yeah, just Lazard was, but Lazard got criticism in other ways as well. I mean, he just and drops and yeah, it was it was rough for Lazard. And I, I'm gonna say with Rogers back, he's gonna have a somewhat of a bounce back season. But again, he's not gonna be. You got other guys to throw to. I mean, you got Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams. If he's healthy, you know, you got competition there and getting uh, targets. Um, and then what other, whatever wide receiver you bring in. So actually, yeah, I did just mention that. You know, if the Jets draft a receiver, well, Lazard kind of slides down the depth chart. Now, he probably ends up being that number four wide receiver. So, which, again, I go back to Green Bay saying he was like that, that two, that lower tier number two and three wide receiver. Well, the way he was with the Jets, yeah, you could say, well... He's like that number three, number four, and that's what he might end up being. Because if they draft one of these receivers, like I said, Lazard's going to slide down the the uh, the depth chart. So, but I think that that might be what the Jets do, because it doesn't. I, I think I saw it doesn't seem like they're going to take. Well, I I didn't not that I expected them, but they're not going to take a quarterback. So it's either you go offensive lineman or you go, you know, best player available. At least on the on the offensive side of the ball. It's going to be either a lineman or a playmaker. It's going to be one of those two things. And if you got one of those receivers sitting there or Brock Bowers sitting there, I think they're going to be inclined to take him. But I know that there's people out there that want the Jets to just take a lineman because, again, you got Tyron Smith who has dealt with a lot of injuries over the course of his career, and you want to have an insurance policy in case he gets hurt. But... The Jets might say, you know what? Get another weapon for Rodgers. They have to go all in because who knows how long you're going to have Rodgers for. I mean, he says he wants to play multiple years. I mean, I covered that once on here. But, again, I mean, who knows? But well, we'll see what happens. But, yeah, I, I think that's what's going to end up happening. They're either going to take a lineman or they're going to take a playmaker, but I would lean more towards them taking another playmaker. Because there's going to be somebody there that they're going to want to pick. One of these top receivers or Brock Bowers. It's going to be one of those guys. So we'll see what ends up happening. And maybe I'm wrong, but that's I, I kind of see that's where the Jets are going to end up going. Is they're going to, they're going to draft a playmaker with their first pick. Because, again, they, they addressed a lot of things. In free agency, the offensive line they addressed. You know, they brought they did bring in Mike Williams, but I think they're gonna want to add another receiver. The defense, I, I mean, is loaded. Um I mean, maybe they shock us and go with a defensive player. I don't know, but you know, I I I think what they're gonna do is they're gonna draft the playmaker on offense with that pick. But let me know what you guys think about that. Um before we go to break now. Second break. Just want to remind you guys once again to tip or donate and get your comments recognized. Make sure to go to the following link that is gsmcpodcast.net. Again, that really helps the show, makes the show more interactive between myself, the host, and you guys, the viewers. Again, that is gsmcpodcast.net. And as always, it is displayed on the ticker on the bottom of the show segment down below. So when we come back from our second break of the show, we will talk about Tyler Boyd. Speaking of wide receivers, We'll talk about Tyler Boyd some more. Um, potential landing spots for him. And uh, that is what we will do when we come back from our second break of the show. So with that being said, stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. 